everybody. Uh, why I'm here? Well, because I knew Roberto as a student, <laughs> but then I met it again when he was presenting uh, Software Heritage at the Scuola Normale of Pisa. And I have the picture here because it makes a nice link with, with, uh, with uh, Felix. And then he, in, at that seminar, he, sorry. Come I, closer, please. Okay. Uh, and that, at, at that seminar, I was uh, involved in, in Software Heritage and also in the development of SWOT. But what I'm going to do tonight is to talk as a user, and I had two experience in using SWOT, one called Softy and the other one called MagmaLisp. And these things have some commonalities and some differences. So they have in common that both the raw in both cases, the raw materials were on paper and that we had few versions, uh, unfortunately for, for Magmalism, just one. And they sh share a fact that they had Fortran as a programming uh, language. The difference is, is that uh, Softy is very small, less than 100 locks. I forgot locks there, <laughs> the line of code. While for uh, Magmalism, I recovered, uh, two th about 2,000 locks out of the 10,000 locks of, of the whole system. And I'll tell you why later. Uh, they differ in, in homogeneity because uh, in Softy has, beside Fortran, also other languages, and we're talking about that. The complementary materials, again, Softy was recovered from the, the deposit of the uh, Museum of Computing Machinery in, uh, in Pisa, and there was essentially only, only the, the code, while for the other, for the other, for the other system, we had a lot of, uh, of complementary ma materials. And they also differ in my personal experience, because essentially Softy was the third case study that we uh, worked out together, and instead, MagmaLisp, I was almost alone. The, the other members of the team were not, not so available. So what is Softy is essentially an exercise in using the CHEP. The CHEP is this old computer that was developed in Pisa. And I think that Pierre saw it <laughs> when he was in Pisa last time. And so the documents that uh, uh, I worked on are essentially they were printed on the teletype that you, you see there in, 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 in the corner. And they told you they are stored in the Computing Machinery Museum in, in, in Pisa. It was also an exercise in numerical analysis, a very small exercise, smoothing of a curve, uh, and was done by Tonina Starita in, in her first attempt to use the, the, the chip. Uh, and you can see there the, the, the sort, of, sort of listing that I had to work on. And it has three programming languages, as I told you, Fortran Chep, which is a, a version of Fortran 2, which was developed for the Chep at the time, in, 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 again, in-house. Then it has also the two listings in the assembly language, and plus, the few lines of the common language that allow the execution of the, of the, of the, of the, of the software. Uh, I have four versions, I recorded the four version of, of, the, of the Fortran code, and I don't know if you can, well, <laughs> better there than that. So these are actually what I classified as two different versions. <laughs> the, <laughs> The listing and the correction that we are put, and I assume that they were run because the fourth version, which in, includes the, the, the correction, it is not really completely identical. So, this is some sort of uh, arbitrariness from my side. They decided that those there were versions. Uh, and since there were 100 lines, I just typed in, I didn't care, care to try to share them. Machine language, MagmaList instead is a longer story. 
and it was developed in in the early 70s, 70s as a machine language for uh, AI. The idea was that the problem, the AI problem at the time, were search in a tree of uh, alternatives in search of a solution, and and so uh, the Lisp was used to to run to write the, the programs that did did the, the search, but to uh, allow more efficient and general search algorithms, we, we I, I must tell you, I, I am one of the author of the thing. <laughs> and, and so uh, we, we sort of generalize LISP. Uh, well, for those who know something, essentially apply has two arguments, the function and the arms. And we, what we did, you say, you can set, define, define the environment in which you evaluated the arguments, where to return the value, and the state to use for the evaluation. So that gives you a very free, large amount of freedom in, in, in defining things. Uh, what has been saved? Well, as they said, out of 10,000 lines, uh, 2,300 implementing the new control features and uh, 70, 700, uh, lines implementing the garbage collect. There is some sort of <laughs> commonality with the, the, the first thing. Uh, as you can see, that's my primitive workshop for digitizing the code. There I had to go and digitize. I couldn't type thing thing in there, and and uh, uh, so uh, I had to limit uh, these things. What was magma list used? Well, it was used uh, for teaching because, in fact, it developed into a full-fledged list system that was used by the student in in, in, in Pisa. Uh, and then we realized that it has any assembly language; it gives you a lot of freedom. But then you need to constrain yourself, and on, we used magma list to implement a more disciplined approach to the non-deterministic programming, which was called NLDLISP. And as instead as such, it was used by the computational linguist in, of the National Research Council in Pisa in a writing system for the understanding of the Italian, Italian natural language. Uh, so, the, the saved code has been done by four authors. Maria Simi, who was then a student, uh, uh, developed the garbage collector, and Giuliano Pacini, Franco Turin, and myself developed the, 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 the control feature. <coughs> what you see there is the back of, of the two inches listing that was saved by Franco Turini and was gave, and he gave me. Uh, he gave it to me a few years ago. Uh, so it's now in my possession, but I, th I think I will deliver it to the computing uh, machinery museum. It is dated 1510-81. And in fact, this is the last known version of the system. And unfortunately, it is also the only one documented. Uh, but I saved it again, somewhat arbitrarily, as version 6.0, because I recovered a conceptual history of the version, various steps, fundamental steps. For instance, we had a version without garbage collection, and then we had a version with the garbage collection, etc. And so that's my, again, personal reconstruction of the story of, of, the, of, the, of the thing. Now, to finish, let's go back to the difficulties of the, of the of the process that Roberto uh, mentioned. So, from my point of view, of uh, uh, say amateur historian and uh, computer scientist, uh, there is something to be done with the metadata because it has been mentioned. Uh, part of the process is collecting information about the process, etc. So, for instance, in what is required is to have a catalog of the items, of the of the actors, 
that that uh, which has to be uh, read by humans. On the other side, their needs for uh, uh, data, metadata in, in a specific standard called meta to be read by, by, by machines. And as you, you see the two, the two samples there, one is the, the uh, author catalog, if you want, and the other one is the code meta catalog, and you can see the information there is just the same. So you have to go and, and, and duplicate it with obvious, the obvious reason, possibility of error, etc. Uh, so on the other side, you also have all the information that comes from the commits that you perform during, during the process. And they tell me that the commits can be specialized. So maybe one may think of, say, using the commit, putting information in standard format in the commits, and then recover all the other the other files by perusing the the commits the commits themselves. Uh, address I had the problem of text recognition. This is this is the OCR question. Uh, I mean. That may be our fault, but anyway, what's interesting? Oops, 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 sorry. <laughs> uh, what's interesting is that I digitized and and and, and recognized part of of the, of the magma lisp. The other part was done by by Guido, uh, colleague in, in the development, and uh, that part I just took a picture with my phone and used the. Google text recognition the feature and it worked <laughs> <laughs> on, on Falcon. <laughs> well, obviously, I then had to go and align and align the things, etc. But I mean, it was good. So uh, I'm, I'm going. <laughs> uh, the last two things uh, we have. Roberto talked about attributing the the the, the, the authorships. Uh, again, uh, making uh, re relying on uh, the, the commit mechanism allows you to give some information, but then uh, in our case, for instance, in the same version, we had different authors and it would be nice to have each file attributed to. Obviously, what you can do is to put in a team and then you describe in in another place what the team does and where it's proceeded but it would, it would be nice to be able to put it directly uh, finally the abstraction level well the process as it is described now it's for people who has some good experience in in uh, git uh, common languages etc etc it might be worthwhile to do as we did from Magonist to Enadilis, but try to have a representation with at a higher level of abstraction. Okay, thank you.